One of the most frequent requests I get here at WP Apprentice comes from members who want to change the fonts on their WordPress website. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. I'll show you where to find high quality fonts for your website, and I'll show you three different ways to add those fonts to your WordPress website. Two of those ways will work with any theme. This is sort of like one of those cooking shows, web fonts, three ways. First, a little bit of history. In the past, it's been challenging to use nice type on the web. You might have a really nice font installed on your computer that you want to use on your website. And when you design it, it looks great on your computer. But when you put it on the web and your visitors come, they will probably see something else completely different. Because the browser they're using is using the fonts, is limited by the fonts that are pre-installed on their computer. And if they don't have the fancy font that you're using to spruce up your headlines, they're not going to see that nice design that you see when you design it on your computer. And what this means that for most of the history of the web, the fonts that we've been using have been, well, the Microsoft Core Web Fonts. So here I am at the Wikipedia page for the Microsoft Core Web Fonts. And if I scroll down, you'll see an image of the samples. And these are the same fonts that you see all over the web. Arial, Hopefully you don't see Comic Sans, but sometimes you do. Courier, Georgia, Times New Roman, Trebuchet, Verdana. And uh, pretty much this small group of fonts has made up most of what we've been seeing and reading on the web for over a decade. Now the reason I went to the Wikipedia page to show you what these fonts look like is because when I went to the Microsoft page... I'm using a Mac, and this demonstrates one of the other problems, is that even when you're using fonts that are widely supported, uh, sometimes they don't work the same on different platforms. And you can see some of these samples on the Microsoft uh, website look just fine, like Arial Black, and others, like Courier, are displaying entirely different characters. Some of this, I think, is a character encoding problem, but this points out that there are many challenges to using different styles of type on the web. Even Microsoft on their sample website, on their page for their Microsoft typography, is having some problems uh, delivering samples of their type to me on my Mac. Fortunately, over the last few years, we've seen the emergence of a new technology known as web fonts. These are fonts that are designed specifically to be used on websites. And they work in most modern browsers, and they work the same across operating systems and platforms. And you apply them using your style sheet. And the generous folks at Google have made a huge collection of web fonts available for free. And you can use them on your website. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So you'll find the Google web fonts at google.com slash web fonts. So when you go to Google Web Fonts, this is what you'll see. Uh, they have 613 different font families to choose from. Uh, that's today. This number is growing. They're adding new fonts all the time. And you can scroll through and see samples of the fonts. And there's a sample sentence here you can view. You can change that to anything you want, so you can see what your own text will look like. So I've added my own sample here, and you can adjust the size as well. And you can see a paragraph view, so you can see what the font would look like in a paragraph. Or you could see single word view, if you just want to see more fonts on the page at the same time. Sentence view gives you a better idea of what the font really looks like. And there's some nice filters over here. Uh, you can focus in on serif, sans serif, display, uh, or handwriting. I'm not a fan of handwriting fonts, but in certain cases they're uh, appropriate. Display is a nice use for headlines in s sometimes if you want a real striking uh, looking font for your headlines. Uh, and so you can scroll through after filtering. Uh, also you've got some options to choose uh, different character sets, different languages as well. I'm only gonna, I'm gonna stick to Latin for this demonstration. And when you find a font that you want to use, uh, go ahead and click Add It to Your Collection. And later on, uh, when I show you how to embed these fonts in your WordPress website, uh, we're going to come back and look at that collection that we've created 
And that will have some information that we need to add these fonts to our website. Another feature I want to point out here is this pop-up, uh, which provides more information about the font. You can see the whole character set. Um, you get some st statistics that'll show you how many people are using the font. Uh, but this pairings tab is really good. It will provide you with some guidance on what fonts go with the font that you've selected. So if you're looking for a headline text, you probably want some body text that matches uh, without being overwhelming. This particular font you would want to use as a headline, but you wouldn't necessarily want to set the body of your posts to use this font. It would be very hard to read, especially at small sizes. So this pairing option will help you find a font to go with the headline that you've picked. So that's what you'll find when you go to Google Web Fonts. And now I'm going to show you three different ways to add those fonts to your WordPress website. And I'm going to start with the easy way. And the easy way basically is to start with a theme that supports Google Web Fonts. And you will be surprised when you start looking around how many themes are starting to support Google Web Fonts and why not. They're free. It doesn't cost the theme designer anything to add Google Web Fonts to their theme. And so here, for example, is a Woo theme that I'm going to use for this demonstration. And I'm scrolling down and looking at the features here, and you see custom typography. Google Web Fonts are supported, built into this theme. Let me show you what this looks like on my demo site. So here's my demo site with 2011 looking like almost every other site on the web. Let me go over and activate that theme I was just showing you. And now you'll see on the theme control panel, I've got a typography option. And I can enable, enable custom typography. And then I can select the type that I want to use for every aspect of the theme, the general type, the navigation type, the page title, the post title. I'm just going to change the post title just to show you how this works. When I select the drop down, I see these same old tired fonts that everyone else is using. And then I've got Google fonts. And it's a long, long list of those 613 font families that we were just looking at. Uh, this is one of the reasons why you want to build the collection on Google Fonts so that when it comes time to select the font from a menu like this, you know what you're going to select because it can be quite challenging to find a font on a list like this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just select one randomly here. This is just for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to save that change. And when I go back to my website, uh, and reload the page, you'll notice not only does the theme change, but the headline changes as well. And that's very different from the uh, standard headline text that you would see around the web. That's a Google web font right there, and that's going to work in most modern browsers on most operating systems. So that's one way to add Google Web Fonts to your WordPress website. Now, some of you I know are going to say, I don't want to buy a theme or I don't want to change themes. So let's look at another way. And this way will work with pretty much any theme. It's the plugin way. You can install a plugin that will easily add Google Web Fonts to your WordPress theme, any WordPress theme. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. There are actually a bunch of different plugins that do the same thing. And the one I'm going to use is WP Google Fonts. And I've installed this. And under Settings, I have an option that says Google Fonts. And when I go there, I get the screen. And I can select up to six fonts that I want to use. That's a lot of different fonts you don't want to use. You probably don't want to take advantage of the full capacity of this plugin. Your website will look like a ransom note. Uh, so basically, you select the first font. And when you do, you're given the option of where you want that font to be used on your theme. All would be body of your post. Pretty much everything would, be in, when it would inherit this font. Uh, I'm just going to do headlines for now. I'm just going to do the top three levels of headlines. 
that's anywhere that your theme is using an H1 or an H2 or an H3. And you could select all of your headlines if you wanted to. Some other options include block quotes, paragraphs, or lists. Uh, so you could go down uh, this page here, adding different fonts for different HTML elements. And if you want to customize how those are displayed, you can enter some CSS here in this box. I'm not actually going to do that, but you've got that freedom to kind of tweak the display to get it looking just right. And when I save this, now this font that we were looking at previously in Google Web Fonts is going to be applied to uh, all of my top three levels of headlines. I've actually switched back to 2011. Uh, and you'll see when we go to reload the page here, I'm back to 2011. But it's not the normal 2011, it's 2011 with the power of Google Web Fonts. And there's my Google Web Font with 2011. So you can actually change those headlines and other aspects of your text uh, with pretty much any WordPress theme by using uh, one of the Google Web Font plugins. Now this final way is the most complex. This is for theme designers. You really need to know something about CSS. You really need to know something about WordPress themes and how the files in WordPress themes work. And this isn't a WordPress theme building tutorial, so I'm going to gloss over some details here. If you're totally non-technical, use one of the first two ways. But if you're creating your own theme from scratch, uh, this is the way you'll add Google Web Fonts. So I'm going to head back to Google Web Fonts, and I've picked a couple of different fonts that I want to use with my theme. Uh, one for the headline, one for the body. And down here at the bottom, uh, you've got three buttons. Choose is where you go through the web font library, finding the fonts you want to use. And as you add them to your collection by clicking on the Add to Collection button, they go to this Review tab, and you can see the fonts that you've chosen here. This is a nice display font for the headline. This is a nice body font. This cabin will look great for my posts and pages. Uh, when you're happy with the fonts that you've chosen, you click the Use button and you get uh, basically everything you need to add the fonts that you've chosen to your WordPress theme. Uh, now, now, these font families uh, include many different variations sometimes. This cabin font in particular has different weights, uh, including italic variations and bold and demi-bold, semi-bold variations. Uh, I could choose to add all of these to my theme. And if I did, I've got a meter over here showing the impact that that would have on my page load time. And as I select and unselect variations of the theme, you can see the impact it's going to have on the amount of time it's going to take for my page to load when using these fonts. Uh, the takeaway here is that you want to use the minimum number of fonts necessary to get the design that you're trying to achieve. Uh, loading your pages down with fonts will make them slower. Those fonts need to be downloaded by the browser, and that takes time. So I'm just going to go with uh, one variation of Cabin and one variation of this Croissant 1. And that's not too bad. I'm in the yellow. And when I select the font variations that I want to use, Google then uses what I've selected to construct uh, this link here. This is a line of code that I put in my header. And when I do that, that will tell the web browser to download those font files for use on the page. So the next step to using these fonts in my theme is to add this line of code to my header. Now there are a number of different ways you can do that in WordPress. As I said, this is not a theme building tutorial. I'm assuming that you know how to create WordPress themes. Uh, I'm here in my header PHP file. There are actually, there is a more technically correct way to do this by adding an NQ uh, style sheet uh, line to your functions PHP. I'm not going to get into that level of detail. This is the easy way to do it. I'm assuming that you've already set up a child theme and you're not editing your parent theme uh, because that's the correct way to do things. So we're making all of those assumptions and I'm just going to go to my header PHP file, copy this line of code, and paste it 
into the head uh, underneath the title tag above these other links that are in my theme file. And this line right here tells the browser to download those two fonts that I've identified that I want to use on the page. So that gets the fonts to the browser for use. Now to actually put these fonts on the page so that a viewer who's looking at my page can see them, I need to edit my CSS for the appropriate HTML elements that I want to style with those fonts. And this is the format that I will use. Google is actually giving me samples of code that I can use to style my document uh, using the fonts that I've selected. So for cabin, I will use font family cabin in single quotes. And then for croissant one, I'll put croissant one in single quotes. So I'm going to take that information and go back to my style sheet. And uh, to make this easy, I'm just going to go to the bottom of my style sheet and add a new section that I'm uh, adding the comment style with Google Fonts. So when I come back, I'm going to know what that is. Uh, and I know, for example, that I just want to do the entry titles. And I know that my theme is using the class entry-title on H1 tags. And so I've created this selector for the H1 entry titles. And I'm applying that croissant one style with a fallback to cursive for browsers that don't support web fonts, which uh, are a tiny number of browsers, but there are some. I want to give a fallback font. This is known as the font stack. But if you're listening this far into this video, you know all of that already because you're a designer. And now that I've got the Google Web Fonts hooked into my theme files and I've got my style sheet set up to use the Google Web Fonts, let's head back to my website. And there's the Google Web Font that I defined uh, in my CSS file and imported through my header with the code changes that I just made. And I could do that with any element uh, in the theme. So if you're a theme designer, you pretty much have complete freedom and flexibility to use Google Web Fonts uh, the same way you would use uh, those old standard uh, core web fonts. And so that's the third way. You now have three different ways to add web fonts to your WordPress theme. To learn more about WordPress, visit wpapprentice.com.